So, welcome. Uh, actually, we would like to start with a question on how many of you have actually used Unity 2D features? Just raise a hand. Okay, there's a lot of 2D users, apparently. So, uh, on our previous version of Unity 4.3, we released uh, a lot of 2D features, and we've been talking with our users, meeting them, and figuring out what problems uh, they have, and now it's talk about how to fix that. So uh, let's go to the topics. Oh, actually, just let's talk about, about me first. So uh, a little bit, I started working in Unity a year and a half ago. I started in the Unity 2D team. And before that, I was using Unity for making games, mobile games, desktop games, architectural visualizations, uh, web applications for five, six years with Unity. And I'm really into like game jams and hanging out with indies and doing all that kind of games. So yeah, but that's about me. Uh, let's go to the actual topics, the good stuff. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the HDSD, uh, sprite animation reskinning, isometric sorting, camera scaling, and pixel perfect sprites. And there will be all the files that I'm going to show in this presentation, all the project files, scripts, everything. You can download them afterwards by using a link that I have in the final slide. So, HDSD. Uh, it's a term that lots of people use for for changing different resolution sprites on different platforms. For example, uh, you want to have a small resolution images on uh, lower end Android devices and a higher resolution images in an iPad version or the desktop version. And this whole H HDSD thing comes to in three different problems. The first one is the image quality. You want to have, in some cases you want to have a certain aspect ratio image or a pixel perfect image for certain resolution. So you want to take quality to be perfect. The next one is the memory usage. On lower tier Android devices, you don't have as much memory as in, in like desktop computers or the new Retina iPads. So you really want to save the memory because you know you don't have that. Uh, the third one is the build size. You know, if you have a, like Android version of a game and an iPad version and a desktop build as well, it doesn't make sense to you know bundle all of the assets to, uh, for example, desktop version assets to uh, Android or Android assets to the desktop if you're not going to use it. So. Uh, Let's take a look how you can actually do that with uh, just using the public API. So, Unity. Um, here, we have a low resolution sprite, very pixelated. Yeah, you can see it from pixels. And it's just a normal sprite. There's nothing fancy about it. And it's actually located on a resources folder. And on the resources folder, we actually have two sprites in there with different, different ending in the file name. So this one is the ASD version. And first thing with these two sprites, with the HD and SD, we have to make sure that they are physically the same size. So if I track the HD to the scene, we can notice that they are actually same sized, like the size matches. But these are apparently much higher resolution. Oh. So uh, let's take a look how we actually achieved that. So on the HD version, we have a pixels to unit size of 100. And it's a 1K texture. And the SD is actually eight times smaller. So an eight times smaller actually means it's 12.5% uh, 
So in this case, we put a pixel to unit size to 12.5. So then the size matches in both of these. Then we have to figure out uh, how to actually change all the sprites in our scenes to different quality level. And for that, I have a, in top menu, there's a quality, H SD and HD. And if I press the HD, it will change the sprites to higher resolution. And then again on SD, it goes to lower resolution. So uh, for that, we have our editor script. And let's take a look at it. It's on the editor folder, change quality editor. So it's a, a standard editor script. There's a two menu, item, menu items there. There's the quality SD and the quality HD. And you call same method from both of them, but with different parameters. There's the SD and HD. So in this method, what we do is that we actually uh, go all through all the scenes we have in our build settings that you're actually going to build your game. Open the scene, set the quality, and save the scene. And we do this for all the scenes, you know, in the build settings. And in the end, we will open the scene that we were originally working on. So let's look at the set quality, because that's actually where the magic happens. And that's a, a static method inside a mono behavior. And what we do there is that we will find all the sprite renders from the scene that's open right now. We go through all of them, get the sprite's name, like the first part of the name. So we take the sprite name from the renderer, split it with a special character that you have selected, and take the first, first item out of it. So that's the first part of the name. Then we use resources load to actually load the sprite we have on the resource folder. That's the sprite name plus specific character plus the wanted quality level, like SD or HD. And if we actually find the sprite, then we will assign it to the renderer. And in the end, we will call unload unused assets. And that's will, you know, because we have still like the old sprites in the memory, so this will actually flush it. So it's, you know, empties that stuff. And uh, of course, when you start, start with this one, uh, if you use it in runtime, what happens is that you will get a little bit of memory overhead because you have the, some other quality sprites in there. And also, uh, using the unload assets, there's a bit of overhead on that. So it's, it's not the fastest thing to do in runtime. But still, you can achieve it by this one. Of course, you can use something else than the render sprite name for resolving the wanted sprite, and then you can actually save a bit more memory. But it's all about optimizations after that. So, and because we can actually call this same method in the start, so let's call the unity, go to the play mode, and we can see, yeah, it changed to the HD resolution when we entered the play mode. And going off again, we have the low resolution image back. So now we have uh, physical size is matching. Uh, we can uh, load the, the actual assets, runtime, and we can save up a little bit of memory. But the third one is that how to strip these from a build. So resources folder. <coughs> Sorry. So resources folder is a kind of special because all the assets that are there are going to include it in the build, even if you use them or not. So first we, what we do is we select the one that quality level, let's say HD, and then we just change the name of the folder. So what happened is that, okay, it's not resources folder anymore. So it means that only the assets 
that are referenced on the scene are included in the final build. So if I try to set change the quality to SD, nothing happens anymore. It's not working. Let's change it back. And now it works again. So before doing the build, change the quality to the, uh, the one you want, and then just make the build. Then it strips all the extra assets away. So that's kind of handy, tricky thing. And let's go a bit forward. We're still continuing with the HDSD, because uh, there's actually two ways to do that. One is to using the resource folder. And other one is using the 5.0 asset bundles. Uh, these are, you know, pro cons on both uh, resources folder. You can use it in both free, Unity free and Unity pro. That's cool. Uh, asset bundles is pro only, sadly. But uh, you will get the smallest builds possible. And uh, I would say, like, pretty nice workflow otherwise. And if you make the system right, you can make, after, in the... Uh, final stages of the game development, you can actually make all the localizations very easily. You can just add hoc localization to your game using as bundles. So I really recommend that. So let's look how to actually do that and hope that's okay. It's crash again. <laughs> just a moment. Go. The Unity 5, there it is. So, uh, so in this case, we have two different folders. There's the HD folder, SD folder, and both of them contain sprite with the same name. And if we look at the sprite, there's a new field in there, in the bottom of the inspector. You can almost see it as a bundle name. And there's a SD for this one, and this is a HD. And it's a tag for when you're doing the building the asset bundle. Uh, this is for the system know what to build in there. And then we have on the top menu, we have a asset bundle build. And this is a, again a piece of editor script. And if I press it, it will build asset bundle out of these both these files. So there's two two asset bundles done. So let's look at the script file. Uh, simple editor script. We, are, we only have a, one thing in there. There's a build asset bundles. The first one is the folder that we are going to save these bundles in. So it, it will create in, in your project folder. Next to the assets folder, it will create a new one in there and just you know, push them out. And this one is important. It's collect dependencies. And you have to use this to actually include your sprite assets in the bundle. And the third one is just the targets you're building this for. This is for standalone version. And you can actually do this, the same thing uh, with the current asset bundle system as well that we have. But there's a, a bit more things that you have to do for it. But you know, if you're using that, just remember to use the collect dependencies. So everything gets included. And if you're using uh, Sprite Atlasing, for example, the Sprite Packer, it will uh, include the packed sprites. So you will still get uh, good performance. And for actually loading these sprites, we have a script for that. So a little bit more code. So in the start, we have to define the URL where we want to download the files. You can use just, you know, uh, your own server or something, or a file system through internet, through all kind of things. And first thing is that we have to actually download it and wait until the download has finished. Then we will find all the sprite renderers on the scene. And hmm.
Yep. Um, yep. Then we go all through all the renderers and find from the asset bundle and a sprite that actually matches matches the name. So we are using the game object's name as identifier to find the, uh, the correct sprite. And in the end, we'll have to unload the asset bundle and dispose it to save, save memory. So you have to, it's good to remember to do that. And what it does is when you hit the play mode, it loads up a sprite from the bundle. It's probably this one. And just loads it to game. And originally, we had a game object here that was, has the name, same name, deal with it, this one. And a sprite renderer, but there's nothing assigned in it. So it's like completely empty. So when you're building your own workflow, uh, you should try to do some kind of combination of this resource folder and this one in a way that you can change the quality uh, when you're actually trying out the game in the editor. And then you, when you build the bundles and the game, you will uh, set all the sprite render sprites empty. So that way you will have like the smallest memory impact and actually very fast loading times in the end as well. Yep, uh, that's about HDSD. Uh, let's go forward to the next one. Uh, sprite animation reskinning. And it's very useful when you have lots of different looking characters. You have like a warrior, you have a wizard, you have a priest, and you would like to share uh, same animation clips and controllers with each one of them. And if you have sprite frame animations, at the moment you have to have duplicate everything, so that's not cool. So we are actually using the resources folder for that as well. So let's take a look at it. It's very simple. Let's go to a uh, different person. Mm -hmm. So, in the scene, we have this animated character. It's called play mode. There's some simple animations there. There's a position, rotation animations. Uh, I think there's a couple sprite frame animations as well. So it's a collection of different parts. Uh, we have a component on it, reskin animation. So there we have the sprite sheet name. It's chapter one now, but if I change it to chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, the appearance of the character changes. So for that, we have a, on the resources folder, we have another folder, the characters. And we open it up. We have the four characters in there. There's the four different characters. And they have the same parts. And you know they don't have to be on the same places on the sprite sheet. That doesn't matter. But, but that's what, what is important is that they have the same name. For We have the head in here. We have the hat in here. And here's the body. And if I go to this one, it's the same thing. Here's the hair, there's the hat, and the body as well. And if we open it up from here, you can see that, okay, here are the, all the sprites. So they are sub-assets. And this is, when you're doing this kind of cut out, jack the animations, it's got very handy to like that. But it doesn't really matter how you use, if you're using uh, sprite sheets or not. That should really matter. So let's take take a look on how we do that again. So Reskin Animation, it's a component. And we are running it on the late update. Uh, that's very important because all the properties that you animate in Unity are, get sampled between update and late update. So if it's any kind of animation at all, you can always override it in late update. So we start by loading all sprites from characters folder and with the sprite sheet name. So it's the 
whole spreadsheet we had on the project. And then we get all these renderers in the child object, in, the, in childs, and go through them. And then we first take the sprite name of the current one we have. Because it's animated, it gets sampled, it gets changed like every some frames. And then we will find from this array a sprite with the same name, simply. So we get the new sprite. And if we actually found it, then we will assign it to the renderer. Uh, if there's some programmers in this room, they probably notice that, oh my god, you shouldn't do that. This is, that is so slow. Uh, you, you totally shouldn't do that. But it's for example. Uh, so optimize this one. Uh, this one and this one, it's super slow. So instead, use something else, like dictionary, hash then up, to start, stuff like that. Yeah, so actually, uh, it covers that one up. So now you can you know, share the same clips, the same controllers on all different looking characters very easily. Uh, let's get to the next one is uh, isometric sorting. Uh, isometric sorting, well, it's hard to explain, it's easier to see, but it's like this rendering mode like old SimCity had. That's like, it's not a side way, side way or top down, and, and how to do that. So uh, it's very easy to do side view, side view, looking 2D games in Unity or top down, but isometric is it's kind of hard, and, but there's a very nice trick to that. And it's, using, it's about using the new sorting order we have for renderers and also having your pivot points right. So let's take a look at it. So uh, we have an apartment in here, and it's not a uh, straight top down or the side view, it's a kind of a bit, bit of a tilted tilted view. Uh, let's start by just selecting sprite from there. Let's take a fridge. And if we move it around, back of the table, it actually is behind. And if it move it down, okay, now it's actually in front of the table. So there's a couple things that we can immediately notice. The first one is that Okay, the pivot point is on the bottom of the sprite. This is very important in this kind of mode. It always depends on how you actually are defining the, uh, the coordinates in the world and everything, but most of the time you should you know, want it to have it in the bottom. And another thing is that when we move this, our order in layer value keeps changing. We go up and down, the value gets you know, higher and lower. So let's take a look on this component it has. So there's uh, just a single piece of, single line of code in here. We take this render sorting order and define it by having the vertical position of the object multiplied by a negative number. It means that the lower the object is, the later it's actually drawn. And it's, it's multiplied in this case with minus 10 because the position is a floating point number, but the sorting order is an integer. So we actually have to multiply it with a, uh, some value that matches up your game to have a, so, uh, more detailed sorting. It's all about, you know, how detailed you want to have that had be. But you can use pretty big numbers because it's a 32-bit integer. Um, there's actually another line in here that says execute in edit mode. It's an attribute for, for this class. And what it does is it actually runs the script and the update is run in editor even if you're not in the play mode. So we have the component on this uh, game object, 
and we are not in a play mode, but still we are actually using the update method. And you can achieve kind of very smooth, very nice workflow with this one. I, I really, really do like it. Uh, but then you have some problems, like, you know, I would have this kitchen sink uh, on top of this cabin in here, but because when I move it up, it actually goes back into rendering. So uh, for that, we can use, you know, just, you know, your normal sorting layers. Let's move it in there and change the sorting layer to something else in the forward. For example, we have a play field here. So now this is rendered uh, after this cabin. And it still uses the ordering layer. So you can use the, the boat in isometric and you get very good control over on how you want to render your sprites. So let's uh, go to the next thing is uh, camera scaling. And uh, by default, uh, Unity uses scaling by the height of the screen. So you have some content in there, and it's scaled by the height if you change the resolution aspect ratio. But sometimes you will have to do something else, like scaling by the wide width of the screen. On portrait, for example, it's very handy. Or having like this pixel density kind of uh, scaling. We have some uh, formulas in here, but they don't make any sense. So let's try to, you know, figure them out. I'm pretty sure there's like, there's more sensible uh, in a couple of minutes. So common scaling scene. Let's load that up. Yes. So I actually change, we'll change this one to different. So uh, we have the, our apartment in here. And if I change the VF pod size, the picture is actually uh, scaled proportionally. This is normal how Unity works. And we can see that, okay, there's uh, some space on uh, up and down, but not much, and some space on, on the sides. But if I change to, for example, iPhone portrait, we can notice that we actually have the same amount of empty space on top and bottom, but on, not on sides. And that's about, you know, scaling the image by the height. So in the camera, we have two components. Let's start with the top one. Uh, there's a value pixels to units. And this defines the density, pixel density for the camera. So let's put it on. And what happened is that when we are changing the VFPOT size, we are not anymore scaling the image. We actually always have same size pixels, even to what the resolution is. And we can use this value to kind of zoom in, zoom out, to have the density that we want. Take a look at it. It's uh, again, single piece of, single line of code. There's uh, our screen, uh, height resolution. We divide it by the density that we would like to have, and divide it by two. And I have no idea why we divide it by two. I, I never figured it out. We just dividing it by two, and it seems to be working. I think there's some logic out of behind that, but I'm not that good at maths that I could actually understand that, that, that stuff. It's too complicated for me. I'm, you know, it's like, that's why I'm doing 2D, not 3D. I'm kind of missing extra dimension. Okay, so we use that value for, for the autographic size of the camera. And if you're using perspective camera, then you have to do, uh, I don't know, some other stuff. But autographic, it works very nicely like this. And let's go to the next one. And let's select the iPhone 5 resolution. So now we have the apartment fitted by the width of the screen. So we would like to have like all the devices we are going to play the game, we would like to match the image on the width. And then we can show some extra on the top and the bottom of the screen. So the problem is that with iPhone, you have a view like this. But if you go to iPad, for example, the Retina iPad, you will have some extra space on the side. 
and it's like you know you don't like you don't want that. So for that we have a script in here, and there's a target width, and it's 640, and that actually the same number that we have for the iPhone 5 resolution. It's a 640 byte width of it. So we would like to uh, show the screen like it would be like 640 wide resolution. So let's uh, press that one, and we can actually notice, whoa. So now we are on the iPad, and we just fit it into the screen. So uh, for that, we are actually using a bit of same code from the last one. The, the height divided by density divided by magical number. And for that, we for the height, we are not using the height of the, you know, the screen resolution high that we have currently. But instead, we have to calculate like a virtual high. And we are doing it by taking our target width, that was 640, and divide it by our aspect ratio that we currently have. So with that, we can actually calculate like if this is our width, what should be, uh, what should be our height, and use that for the autographic size calculations. So with this one, you can have the density and the width scaling, and they're both very, very handy when you're doing all sorts of games that use multiple resolutions or aspect ratios. And then the next one, pixel perfect sprites. So, uh, on some cases, you would like to have like you have small resolution screen, or even a bit bigger screens as well. You want to have like pixel perfect, like it, it, the image is sharp. It's like there's no bleeding or sub ink accuracies or anything. So, how to achieve that? And for that, we can use the same thing we used before, just single line of code, and, and a custom material. So, in here, we have a slot picture again, and uh, let's take the sprite, and it's just a normal sprite, there's nothing in it, nothing at all, just your default sprite. And on camera, we have this component, pixel perfect camera. And this is value, pixels to units, and it's 100. And if we actually select the sprite asset from the project, we can notice that it has the same value and the same field in here, pixels to units, and it's 100 as well. So now the camera's pixel density and the asset's uh, physical size, kind of how we generate the physical size, those, valu those values matches. So it means that the camera is trying to uh, draw it as a pixel perfect. But that's not enough. Because we will get all kind of sub-pixel inaccuracies with that. If you're moving, for example, your object in floating point space, it means that it doesn't uh, fit to the uh, pixel grid anymore. So for that, we have to create a new material and assign it to the material slot of the sprite renderer, and then select a color shader using sprites default. This is a built-in shader in Unity. And what you can notice that there's a pixel snap to go in that. And if we press it, we can maybe see there's a just just small small difference in the Im image. And what this pixel snapping does is it actually takes all the vertices uh, of the sprite and snaps them to the pixel Kind of pixel grid. So when you are moving uh, your sprite around, it will actually get snapped to the pixels all the time. So you don't have to round this number. It will be done in the in the actual shader. So that was actually like the most common things uh, people have uh, with Unity 2D. There's also a lot of physics things, uh, physics 2D, but. I'm not going to that because uh, in 4.5 we have fixed almost everything related to 2D physics. There's like a ton of fixes. So all that stuff is covered and also with 4.5 you can actually use physics joints. We have cool stuff for them. So uh, there's the download link. 
uh, you can find all the files from there. Of course, the example files for the Unity 5.0, the building the asset bundles, that doesn't work until Unity 5. Uh, duh. But if you're using asset bundles right now, you can just you know make your own system that's kind of similar. And if anyone has questions, you know now you have the actual 2D developer here. So anything at, at all is in your mind. So yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. I need. Uh, no, I don't have. Um, if you have questions, uh, please come to the uh, to the aisle, the front of the aisle. It's it's hard to see. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no any more questions, uh, you can find me after the this presentation and just come to me and talk privately. Okay, cool. Thank you.